Hi guys, Soup here. Trying to upgrade your rig without spending a ton of money is absolutely impossible in sim racing, unless you are a DIYer. There are several videos out there about DIYing, but I recently got into 3D printing and I wanna share some of my favorite things that I've 3D printed in order to upgrade my rig without emptying out my wallet. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the things that I've 3D printed for my sim rig. So I'm gonna go in an order of what I like the least to what I like the most. So the first thing on my list is cable management clips. I've printed probably about 50 of these little cable management clips and I was able to take a messy sim rig with cables all over the place and kind of clean it up and make it neat enough that I have one plug going into the wall and one USB plug going into my PC, which is the way it should be on your sim rig if you really want to get into cable management. You stick it into the, the slot on your aluminum profile like this on your sim rig, and then you turn it, and then you can feed cables through through these parts right here. I would The only uh, criticism I have of this design, and I could have redesigned it myself, but I found these on Thingiverse. I'll put a link below to all the STL files and, that I go over here. Um, but the other thing is, is that, that that arm is a little weak. I think I would like to make that a little thicker. So I may redesign that at some point. But cable management is definitely something that, that I benefited from. And while it was pretty awesome, it is actually my least favorite out of everything that I've printed. So going on to number two here, kind of in the same vein as cable management, PSU and rig mounts. So my pedals have a, a PSU brick that goes along with it. My wheelbase has a PSU brick that goes along with it. And those things just were kind of laying on the floor before. Little brackets that you can print and mount to your rig. So you can mount your hubs, you can mount your power strips, and you can mount your PSU bricks and keep them out of the way. My third favorite thing, I don't have an example here because they're all on my rig actually, but I, I printed a glove holder which I really like. Actually, I, did, I thought it was kind of stupid at first. I was like, why would anybody want to hold sim racing gloves on their rig? But then I realized that any way you can just get little things out of the way on your rig, it actually helps a lot with keeping things organized and, and keeping things uh, ready to race as soon as you sit down. So I printed uh, a headphone holder, a headphone hook. Uh, I printed I printed a, a uh, phone holder, just a place to put my phone whenever I'm sitting in the rig. So it just kind of goes in right there. I don't know if you can see that. And I don't know. Now that I'm saying these out loud, I kind of think like cable management may be a little higher on the list than these accessory holders, but I digress. So number four is my Arduino Nano mount. So an Arduino Nano, I have an example right here, is a little tiny chip that you have to do a little bit of soldering to get some uh, cables connected to any kind of, well, it's not just any kind. They're the WS, I forget what they're called exactly. They're they're WS 12B. I don't know. Off the. Oh, crap. Drop that toy. No, I, I can't remember what they are. But anyways, I'll put it in the in the description. I can't keep this thing in my hand. Where the heck did it go? What the? But I made a little box to hold this Arduino Nano chip, and mount it onto my rig, and then I connected it to a strip of LED lights similar to this, not exactly like this. Hey man, I'm doing a video. I'm doing a video. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go lay down, okay? So the way that I use that light strip is I ended up mounting it underneath kind of my dash here, I guess you could say. And so what it does is, let me turn on the lights here. They're actually off right now. Let me give them a good color. So what it does is, is it lights up, it lights up my button box, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And then it also changes based on flags. So as I'm driving, as I get yellow flags, as I get a green flag, it'll change colors. And I have them turned down really low. If I decide to turn them up, you can see, man, these things get really bright. Uh, and I don't like them that bright. So I leave them around like 10% or so, 5% even would be fine. I think I have a tie for the favorite if I really think about it. But next to last favorite is redesigning my button box. So some of you have seen the video of my button box and I use one of those big, bulky project boxes that you can buy on Amazon. I ended up redesigning that button box and making it a little slimmer and a little nicer fit. And I cut down the amount of uh, switches that are on it because I just didn't use all of them. But I definitely use the ignition switch. I definitely use the remote start and I definitely use wiper, wiper and headlight toggles. I actually don't use headlight toggles, but I use wiper toggles quite a bit. And I left the headlights on there because everybody knows you got to have your headlights to be able to pass somebody in iRacing. So 
uh, redesigned that button box, mounted it in a different area so I wasn't using up so much of my sim rig space here. And then my tie. So I have a tie for my absolute favorite thing that I 3D printed. It's an RGB matrix flag display. So it's like a sim flag display. So basically, I, I designed this box myself and, and it holds an Arduino board underneath this LED matrix, which just slips into here. These aren't as fancy as the ones you can buy online. The ones you can buy online have like glass cover and everything, but honestly, I uh, am not bothered by it at all. But it, but this, with some effort, obviously, because I'm not a designer, this is the first time I ever designed things, this slips into this little mount, and then you can mount this on the side of your rig, obviously on a vertical a piece of vertical profile, and mount it on the side of your rig, and then put it anywhere on either side you can flip it over and put it on the other side and it takes one USB-C plug to mount into that Arduino board and then what you have is with the assistance of uh something like you can you can program on your own but really Daniel Newman racing LED profiles are really worth the money but it'll show you the gear that you're in it'll show you any flags that are displayed it shows you when you're in the pit it shows you when uh you uh, need to turn your ignition on it tells you when you need to hit your start button obviously if your car's not running it does a whole bunch of things that are really awesome and i've actually gotten very used to using it to the point where i thought hey this is just a cool addition onto the sim rig now i actually depend on using it quite a bit this is absolutely the coolest thing that i have 3d printed so I use, you know, I, it's it's got three parts and I borrowed something on Thingiverse and redesigned it for my own liking, but it's got a, a front, a middle, and a back, okay? And, and so three parts that you have to print to make this thing work. It's got an Arduino board in it for the LEDs, and then it has a couple USB cables connected to the back and a 6.8 inch Vocor screen. So overall, this thing cost me, if, if I didn't have to buy things in bulk, it cost me about $100 to make this thing. That's not including the filament cost and like glue and uh, and little wires that I had sitting around. But in parts that I had to buy, about 100 bucks. Uh, if, I, if I priced only the parts that I included in this, but since I had to buy some of the stuff in bulk, I actually spent around 150 bucks on this. And I think one of these dashes probably would cost someone at, at least $200 if you wanted to buy it right off the shelf. But the other thing that I did that I really, uh, I really am happy that I, I, I added and took the time to design on this thing is I designed my own mount. And what I did was I redesigned the back of this thing and you can't see it here unless I open it up and I'm not gonna open it up. But on, but on the inside of this DDU, there are actually magnets and then, sorry, it won't go that way. And then I designed this mount so I could just stick it on and magnetize it wherever I want and stick it on and change it based on what wheel I'm, I'm racing with. When I'm racing with my GT Neo, I want it in front. When I'm racing with this round wheel, it's too big. I probably should have got a five inch for the round wheel, uh, but I wanted the 6.8 inch and I mounted off to the side on a different mount with some different magnets that I have sitting there. So I, if you're not familiar with Lovely Racing dashboards, you need to be familiar with that. That is the program that, or that is the, I guess it's the sim hub add-in uh, that I use to make this all work right here. The LEDs, same as the LEDs I went over before, same as the flag box, same as the as the LEDs I have mounted underneath the rig. They're just controlled by an Arduino uh, Nano. But you can see I'm in the pits right now. Let's go ahead and get out of the pits. But if I turn the limiter on, for example, stop it. If I turn the limiter on, you got that that effect there. Um, it's really cool actually when you when you turn the car on you get a nice little woo, Little effect there. You got your rpm indicator right across the top there and with the daniel newman racing LED profiles this changes based on what car you're in so I can actually change that in sim hub So as I'm, I'm revving the engine there you can see um, For the gr86 which I'm in right now it goes from green to yellow to red and then goes blue You know go left to right for example, and use all 16 of them. So same type of thing, just all 16 LEDs. I can make it meet in the middle, which is really cool, I think. Uh, I can do F1 style. I don't even know what F1 style is. Let's see. I don't understand that, but apparently that's F1 style. But I, I kind of like the left to right, and I kind of like it for each specific car. So it kind of mimics the dash that each specific car has. Um, so I, I generally leave that on. But on top of all that, 
I can change the colors too. I mean, if I wanted to do, you know, white, I could do white. If I wanted to do Arctic is another option. There are just so many options with this Daniel Newman Racing LED profile that you can add in and the add-in in the Sim Hub. It's really, it's really worth the money. It's really a cool add-in, especially if you're gonna do some projects like this and add on um, any sort of LEDs. But anyways, this DDU, absolute favorite thing that I 3D printed for sure, with the flag box in a very, very, very close second. So that's that's some of the projects that I've been working on. If you're interested in these projects, if this video helps you out, if you have any questions about it, please leave it in the comment. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the track. I uh, on Etsy or through uh, through a vendor or something like that. I don't know. I, I I I can't do these things on the fly. I'm trying to be more like I'm trying to be more spontaneous and not be so scripted in my videos, and I suck at it. But anyways, I'm trying. What am I talking about here? I'm gonna go over my favorite sim racing 3D print. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So. Honor. Come on, man.